Hi there, and welcome to VO2 Max Productions' first official installment of our Training Talk series. Today we're going to talk about nutrition, and by nutrition I mean the food that you eat as an endurance athlete, and more specifically the, some of the unique nutritional demands of a vegetarian endurance athlete, because that's what I have more experience in. So i got to start off with a little legal spiel here. I am not a doctor. I'm not a registered dietitian. Uh, this is merely my opinion. Uh, there's bias. Uh, this is just advice. Uh, for real nutrition, you should consult your doctor before taking any supplements. Uh, this advice is not meant to cure, treat, or prevent any diseases. So a lot of this is just based on lay study, personal experiences, and uh, you could read up more. There's a lot of information out there on the interwebs or ask your doctor. So basically what I'm saying is you can take my advice with a grain of salt. And that's figuratively, not literally. But I did take a couple classes uh, back at Cornell and I've been uh, pretty much been a lifelong vegetarian, ovo-lacto-vegetarian, and a pretty serious uh, distance runner for the last 15 years or so. I'm doing more ultra trail mountain races now, so my focus is more on the longer events, marathon and up, and I've had some experience with some of the unique demands of being a vegetarian during all this training. So basically that means, in a nutshell, I'm built out of cheese and peanut butter, because those have been my primary protein sources. So I'll probably say some generalizations, but I've been noticing a trend more towards plant-based diets as a healthy alternative to the traditional um, meat and grain-based, dairy-based diets that we see a lot. And I don't mean to, you know, preach on anyone's dietary choices. I'm not anti, totally anti um, meat. I think people should be able to eat, you know, what what they enjoy sometimes and maybe what they like. And you don't have to totally exclude something in your diet. Um, I have a lot of respect for people that are really strict with what they eat or don't eat. But I think that variety and uh, just some enjoyment out of food is, is necessary. And I'll indulge in things like beer and desserts. I have a crazy sweet tooth, so I don't mean to say this is the only, this is the right way, because uh, there's a lot of different ways that you could eat healthy for your body type. So we see all these options now out here for vegetarians, uh, whether you're, maybe you're gluten-free, maybe you're a fruitarian, and you just eat fruit mainly. That's uh, another growing diet. There's paleo, um, more Atkins, based raw food diet, uh, lots of different plans out there. So the first thing I'll say, and a lot of people might disagree with this, um, but as a vegetarian endurance athlete, I'd say, you know, people are always concerned about how much protein I'm getting. And, you know, I think protein is one of those things that's generally overrated, uh, at least in the American, traditional American diet. Uh, a lot of people think they have to, you know, take this insane amount of protein or taking, you know, extra protein supplements. But in reality, uh, it seems like most Americans are actually eating way more than enough protein. Um, and even like with something like the Atkins diet, like, yeah, maybe it works. You'll, you'll lose weight uh, following the Atkins diet. But, you know, the amount of protein you're eating compared to the percentage of carbs, uh, I just personally think that's pretty unhealthy. Um, also, the, there's cholesterol issues there too. So protein is composed of amino acids, and as we learn in biology, they're the building blocks of proteins. There's essential amino acids, and for when you're eating meat, you get those you know right away. You get straight up um, all day. They're all lined up already. But as a vegetarian, it's a little more challenging. So you have to make sure you eat complementary amino acids. So things like beans and rice together, uh, those proteins or those amino acids complement each other to form more whole protein source. And then I discovered, you know, something like teff, uh, this ancient grain. It's actually from the highlands of Ethiopia. It actually contains all the essential amino acids just in one pop right there. And your body learns to adapt. It will pull the amino acids together 
uh, and let them form as a complete protein. And as I mentioned earlier, my main protein sources have had some dairy over the years, kind of shifting on minimizing that more and more. But you know, you got things like beans and rice that you could really rely on as complementary amino acids, and um, I think they get more than enough protein. So now I'll say something that I think is totally underrated, and that is the healthy fats, um, polyunsaturated fats more specifically, but things that you'd find in like olive oil or uh, avocados, uh, these uh, almonds, things like that. I even take uh, this Udo's oil, Floor Health Udo's oil blend, uh, and it's got even got the omega-3 and omega-6 essential fatty acids in them. But, you know, a lot of people freak out because they see, oh, you know, an avocado has a ton of fat in it. Well, you know, it's polyunsaturated fat. It's the healthy fat. It's not like eating a burger at McDonald's. It's just loaded with saturated fat. So the essential fats, the healthy fats, are going to be a good fuel source if you're an endurance athlete and something that your brain needs to function also. So in the interest of keeping this video relatively short, I'm just going to touch on the very basics of what I think are key vitamins and minerals that vegetarian athletes uh, should be aware of because they're fairly important uh, for how your body functions, especially when you're pushing it to the extreme of its aerobic capacities. So the first thing we want to look at uh, is iron. That's a real key uh, component of your whole aerobic metabolism. And iron is mainly found in meat sources. Well, the, the source that you could absorb the best is called heme iron. And that you get directly, you're thinking like eating a steak, red meat, uh, pretty much any meat, seafood even, is going to have quite a bit of that heme iron in it. And that is absorbed a lot better than the non-heme iron, which is plant-based iron sources. So things like spinach, um, maybe you're eating molasses. But the absorption rate is going to vary on, depending on individuals, whether you take it with like vitamin C, uh, things like that. So iron has always been a pretty big concern uh, with runners that I've lived with from college, uh, post-collegiately at Hanson's, and I'll you know get my blood checked even now to make sure it's I stay on top of that. But a lot of people say, oh, it's because you're a vegetarian, like you have trouble getting iron in, and that may be true to some extent, but. A lot of the guys that I lived with in college and ran with at Hanson's also had trouble getting their iron stores up, and they ate red meat all the time. They were out cooking burgers in the summer, so I don't think that's really the issue. It's the fact that when you're training so hard, you get uh, you're pounding the red blood cells just right out of your feet. Uh, you're losing maybe some blood um, just from all the the hard training that you're doing, and you need to be able to replenish those red blood cells and keep your hemoglobin count in check. So iron, very essential for that. And some people take supplements, uh, I've taken liquid iron, I've taken iron pills. It's just, you really have to be careful with any iron supplements that you take. And you, this is something you do want to ask your doctor about because you take too much iron, it's, it's going to kill you, basically. You overload on iron quite easily, it's quite potent, and it's really bad. Even if you're just taking more than your body could absorb, it's uh, really not good. So you have to be careful with iron. And generally, if you get that tested, uh, you get a blood test, you ask for, they're first gonna probably just do a complete blood cell count, a CBC, uh, and you could check your red blood cell count, hemoglobin, just the basics like that, but then also you'd have to add on a ferritin test, and then maybe a total iron stores test and a percent saturation. Uh, and you can check those ferritin numbers. It really does vary depending on individuals, but I know, for example, in my case, if my ferritin is below 40, I am not, that's not optimal at all. I'm going to be running slower than if it was above 40. So uh, just something to keep in mind. So another thing I want to address is vitamin B12. And the B vitamins are really important for energy production uh, in the body and it's usually something that you'd always get from animal sources. Dairy products, eating meat, uh, provides you plenty of B12. So as a vegetarian you do want to keep on top of that as well. And I eat eggs so I, I do get uh, quite a bit of B12 through that although maybe looking at you know not eating as much cheese and uh, dairy products. But 
You could also get this nutritional yeast uh, that I found. It's uh, full of B6 and B12, uh, which you definitely could probably not get enough of. Um, I'll also drink, you know, some of those blueberry juices, uh, a lot of healthy fruits. Uh, try to get those vitamins up in your body. But B12, also take supplements of that. Um, that one you don't have to worry about overdosing on as much. Uh, usually when you look at the dosage of a B12 supplement, it's going to be like several hundred percent, maybe a thousand percent of your daily value. Well, you only absorb a fraction of that. So you really can't get enough B12. It's not like iron. Probably won't overload on it. I've even had B12 injections before. But something to keep an eye on if you're a vegetarian and you definitely want to stay on top of that. So then a final thing that I'd kind of keep an eye on, it's not as much of a concern as iron or B12, would be the vitamin D, uh, which is great for your skin, but also building healthy bones and helping you absorb calcium. So that's something that you know you see fortified in milk a lot. Um, but you know you have to be careful because things things like milk or you know cereals, you eat, you know, some wheat bran or total cereal, and you see, oh it's you know it's alright, it's fortified with all these vitamins I get. 85% of this and 90% of this, but it's kind of debatable maybe how much of that you're actually absorbing. And you know, cereal's great, it's real convenient, a lot of people like it, they eat it all the time, tastes good, but you don't want to rely on just getting those sources of vitamins and those percents from that diet. You've got to mix things up a little, variation's always key. So fruits and veggies, you really can't get enough um, you try to eat a colorful diet, eat your rainbow is what they say, but fruits and veggies, um, really just chock full of vitamins, chock full of antioxidants. So I don't want this video to drag on forever, um, I could try to answer some questions and comments. As I mentioned before, this is just uh, my opinion on things, and you want to consult a registered dietitian or doctor before you try anything radical. Um, obviously there's individual differences, not only in body chemistry, uh, differences between males and females, but also in the amount of training you're doing and the types of training you're doing, because different training load is going to demand uh, different things out of your body. Maybe it's, you know, you're doing more imp high impact, uh, maybe then you'd need a little more protein. But, you know, if you're running 100 miles a week or 10 miles a week, uh, you know, that might affect your iron stores differently as well. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.